So I'm living in Las Vegas uh, with Lynn Hill. I just got done with graduating from college, trying to figure out what to do. And for the time being, we're trying to do as many new routes as we can up in the Red Rocks. So that's keeping us pretty busy. We have these shitty jobs. I'm working in a gas station. And she's working. I don't know what doing. Can't remember. Like doing fitness related stuff. And out of the blue, we get this call from Mike Hoover, who's an Academy Award winning documentary filmmaker who's been asked to try to go down to Angel Falls for an ABC show. Angel Falls being the world's largest waterfall. There's an ABC show based on the Guinness Book of World Records. And they uh, want somebody to go down there and do this world record rappel off the falls. And the falls is like 3,150 feet high or something like that, bigger than El Capitan, like giant, three quarters of a mile high. He has other jobs, he can't make it. He calls me up, wants to know whether I can go down. I just gotta get a partner. There's a whole bunch of money involved, at least by my standards at that time. So of course I said, sure, I'll go down to Venezuela and do a rappel. So I got my buddy Jim Bridwell, who I'd done a bunch of climbing with in Yosemite, and we next thing I know we're on a jet and we're in Caracas and we have to get to this jungle resort named Canaima. Uh, in the middle of the jungle, there's no roads. So we fly in a little bush plane, land. It's a really exotic place. I mean, it's out in the middle of the rainforest. Neither one of us has ever been there to anything like that, you know, ancient jungle. And I mean, these huge apuis, which are these sandstone formations just rising out of the jungle for some of them are half a mile high. I mean, it's really like going back in time and there's this giant lagoon and, you know, waterfalls gushing here and there and very exotic. And uh, I really liked it. And next day we're on, a, we got a helicopter and fly up to the, 45 minutes up this river, follow this river, winding river, right through the middle of the jungle, up to Angel Falls, and pours off this huge escarpment, 3,000 feet, just pours right off the edge and just goes down into this valley. So we get helicopter to the top of this thing, and it's like a maze of all this, all of these big towers and what have you. The water running off a lip had just over eons had carved all of these, just like wormwood up there, right? All these pillars and pinnacles. It's, it's not just like one channel with the with the waterfall gushing off. There's it's like a whole bunch of different fingers that are sticking up like that, and the water's rushing through these. And sometimes you look down, it's like a hundred feet deep, and the water's way down there. It's just really it's a it's a thing that's sort of impossible to explain. It was very confusing, um, and it was at the wet season when we were down there, or towards the end of it. We had what we thought was a window of of probably no rain, we hoped. That can be a real problem in the jungle, as we'd find out. Um, so we decide, okay, we're, there's a place next to the falls that makes a spectacular like look and picture, and we can rappel off maybe, I don't know, it's maybe 100 feet to the right of the falls. And this falls is, I mean, it's hard to describe it. As I said, it's at the end of the wet season, so there's just millions of gallons of water rushing over this thing. This torrent, huge white torrent, just gushes off a lip. And after it falls for, I don't know, 2,000 feet, it starts spreading out into a bridled veil. And at the bottom, it's just this mist, huge mist, like fog falling down. Anyway, we're next to this gusher, and it's making all kind of noise. And, uh, and really spectacular up there. And also, the, the, the wall is super overhanging. Like, you look down, and it's just like a straight drop for... I don't know, at least 2,500 feet. You know, that's just like half a mile, right? And you're like, whoa, that's abrupt. So we figure out some place where we think it's a logical place to be able to start. We anchor the rope off, go down a little bit and look around, looks good. So, you know, the next day we're up there filming. There's a couple of helicopters out in, in space and we bail off. Now, the, the thing is we're on these 600 foot ropes and we have, I don't, I don't remember, it's been like a thousand years ago, but we had like five of them or six of them. And a 600 foot rope and coiled up, it's giant, right? And I got two of them over each shoulder and Jim's got two and we tie one off and throw the end off, tie a big knot in it. And I head down and right off, I'm 20 feet out in space. So basically the first 600 feet, I'm just free hanging, repelling all the way to the end of the knot. I can't, like I can't get into the wall. I can't anchor the rope to anything. So all I can do is hang on Jumar's a cinders, flake out, 
another one of the 600 foot ropes, tie it onto the bottom of the one I'm on, and then bail into another rappel. And after, I don't know, three or 400 feet down in this thing, I could finally get in and touch the wall and I banged in some pitons, got a good anchor. Bridwell came down, you know, we chucked off another 600 foot rope, same kind of thing. And it, it just went like that all the way down. And we're maybe about halfway down the wall and it starts raining. And I'm like, you know, I mean, we can probably get down pretty quick, so it's really not going to be, you know, too big a thing, I'm thinking. But, you know, in a matter of 10 minutes, this falls, it started widening at the top. You can look at it. And what was 100 feet over there is now 50 feet. And then we make one more rappel, and it's like 20 feet. And that's getting really close. And by that time, we're down far enough to where the falls are. It's, it's dissipated to where it's more that mist kind of thing, but we're still getting soaked. Um... So we tie on one more rope and I get down and look down, there's a ramp system over to the right and I go, look, you know, we're, we're, this thing's get, starting to get pretty horrendous here. Any, any minute now, if this rain keeps up, this waterfall is gonna be falling right on our head. So I made a big pendulum over, skipping off the face and got over this sort of vegetated ramp system, anchored off to a little tree over there. Jim came down and that was officially, we declared, okay, that's the end of our rebelling. Um, I figured the helicopter, a skilled helicopter could come, could come in and get us. So we, uh, we had a walkie talk and we called the helicopter pilot and we, you know, we'd already done, I don't know, 2,200 feet of rappelling or so. We sort of skipped the last 800 feet, swung over on this ramp system. Helicopter pilot says, sure, come on in. I'll come on in. He's the guy, American guy, former Vietnam helicopter pilot, sort of crazy, but very skilled, a lot of experience. He swoops in and he goes, no, I can't land. You're going to have to, there's too much stuff. You're going to have to chop it down. Whoops a machete out. So we spent another hour hacking this a rough sort of area out of this, just this overgrown sort of hedgerow kind of thing. And now it's, it's starting to approach night and the rain, if anything, is getting worse. And so the helicopter pilot comes in again. He can't really land but he can get the skid down long, you know, far enough to where we can jump up and grab it, mantle into the thing, I pull Jim up, we freaking take off. Just left the ropes and whatever, you know, all the gear is left behind. We gotta get out of there. He says, look, this time, you know, the time thing, trying to get back the 45 minutes to Kanaima. The only way back, there's no, there's no radar, he's gotta follow the river, it's getting dark, yada yada. So we get on the river and start whipping down this, this river and it's very, you know, it's a pretty wide thing, probably 100 feet wide, and moving pretty good. There's no, it's not like white wide or anything, but it's 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 flowing. But on each side of this thing are these huge banyan and ramen trees that grow right down to the water line, and they're 150, 200 feet high. So the jungle and this rainforest is right, like we're in a channel of wood, you know, above this river. Um, so we got to make sure we stay in it because the moment that we start drifting into these trees, the rotor on the helicopter starts chewing into it. You know, and it's not good, right? And uh, sure enough, it starts getting dark. And then the fog comes in. And just like, like in a second, it seems, like when it gets dark in the jungle, it gets dark. It's like somebody flipping a switch. And all of a sudden, we're only halfway there. We got about 20 miles left. And it's freaking dark and foggy. And we can't see a thing. And uh, we're looking through the, you know, through the through the front of the, the helicopter, this plexiglass bubble, and this Bell this Bell Jet Two, I think, or Jet Ranger Two, and uh, the helicopter pilot can't see anything. Anyway, we we shortly arrive at this this plan where, or this scheme where, I hold onto the dash, I hold onto Jim's Jim Bridwell's harness. He leans out into this driving rain looks and sees how far away the trees are, yells back to me, or points back to me, and I yell to the helicopter pilot, and he flies accordingly. And now, obviously, this isn't gonna be a very fast kind of thing, and the rain is just hammering down, and we're, we keep, you know, the, the, the rotor keeps chewing into these trees, and it just goes on and on and on, and we're doing this for like an hour. And I'm going, man, this is, you know, I don't know if this is sustainable. Um, and I'm thinking, well, even if we crash, at least I can float, 
in this river and it goes right back to Kanaima. There's no forks or anything. He goes, no, that's not. He goes, remember those waterfalls? And I go, oh, shoot. The river pours over this thing called La Acha Falls, which is like 100 feet high and hammers into these rocks down below. So unless we escaped in the jungle and never to be found again, trying to float down into this river in the Kanaima, that's dead. You know, it's deadly. So we got to somehow or another pull this flight out, but I'm not sure exactly how, and it's not going very well. Then the fuel light comes on in the helicopter. You know, bam, bam, bam. He's go, oh boy, we only got like 10 minutes. And we're like, how far away from, you know, Kanaima are we? I'm yelling and screaming, eh, we're not sure, you know. And I mean, I'm just going, man, this cannot, this is not happening. This, there's no way, I'm, you know, is this real? Just everything's gone wrong all of a sudden. And, you know, to make a long story short, we get a little bit further, the rain gets a little bit harder, the, you know, the, the river gets narrower, we almost go in, we're chewing into these trees. He goes, I, I, he, the pilot finally just says, I can't do this any longer. He pulls out, gets up above, and there in the distance to the fog, we can see the lights at Kanaima. Like, it's like, ha, oh, salvation. So he whips down over the jungle as far as we can, you know, as much as he can see. And then the second group of alarms go off. And so there's this big alarm and these sounds and lights are, you know, he goes, oh, we're on fumes now. He goes, we, you know, we're, we, we, hold on, you know. And the thing starts chugging. And we're just about there. And we, we get over the, <laughs> we get over the, uh, the landing strip or whatever it is. And he starts coming down and, you know, it's the helicopter's chugging and whatnot, sort of coughing in and out. And we get right down to the ground and just cuts out. And the, we couldn't have been more than a couple of feet off the ground, but the helicopter just goes, bam, just, just pancakes in. Didn't break anything. Might have bent the skids a little bit, but, uh, you know, like we're, we're rattled and sort of hammered and, you know, we're all tired and, you know, Bridwell can't even see because he's been hanging out of the helicopter for the last hour with the rain driving in his face. And we just, at this point, just freaking dive out of this thing and run for it. You know, even though the helicopter's back there dieseling and shaking and farting and whatnot. But, uh, you know, it's hard. To, it, it takes a while to, to finally set up, you know, for it all to sink in. Yeah, we're done with this. You know, what started off as a, as a rappel, you know, down this world record high waterfall ends up with this, you know, survival flight down this river in the fog, in the rain with no, you know, with no gas and a sort of half-assed crash landing. So, you know, that's about as close as I can remember uh, to having something end real bad. That's it.